Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for February 19, 2015. This message is part of a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where we are learning how to win in life and how to do it God's way by His unearned and amazing grace. The title of today's message is The Grace to Overcome Haters. There's going to be people who raise up who rise up to come up against you because of what God is doing in your life, but you don't worry about them because what's on you is greater than the opposition that they bring. God can give you the grace to overcome haters along the way on the path to success in life. Grace-based success, that is. All right, so yesterday we looked at Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Today we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Uh, we saw yesterday that King Nebuchadnezzar had a statue built, and he said... Uh, um, that basically people had to worship the statue. And when the music played, they had to bow. And if they didn't bow, they were going to burn, right? And so here we go. Daniel chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. The Bible says, So, as soon as they heard the sound of the horns, flutes, lyres, sambucas, bagpipes, and other musical instruments, they bowed down and worshiped the golden idol. All the peoples, nations, and different language groups were there and they worshiped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then some of the Chaldeans came to the king and began speaking against the people from Judah. They said, King, may you live forever. King, you gave a command. You said that everyone who hears the sound of the flutes, uh, horns, lyres, sambucas, harps, bagpipes, and all the other musical instruments must bow down and worship the golden statue that you established. And you also said that who does not, whoever does not bow down and worship the golden idol will be thrown into a very hot, fiery furnace. There are some Judeans who you made important officials in the province of Babylon, and they have ignored your order. See, that was their issue. The issue was that they got promoted over them. And so they were saying, listen, you remember those Judeans that you just promoted? In Babylon to these high positions, they refused your order, O king. Their names are now here. They're dropping dimes. Here's the names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they don't worship your gods. And they didn't bow down to worship the golden idol that you set up. Now, we're going to see what happens, you know, later tomorrow. But, man, I mean, these people just came and they reported to the king. And they were dropping dimes on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because of their own insecurities and because they were upset that they didn't get the positions that the Judeans received. So what does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you, and I believe that they're going to be a blessing to you. Number one, favor ain't fair, right? So Bishop T.D. Jakes famously coined the phrase, favor ain't fair. And while it may not be good English, it still is good teaching. Favor ain't fair. The favor of God will just flow in your life in such a way where people will say, man, that's not even fair how good God has been to that person. The Chaldeans were jealous of the three Judean boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because they had received promotions to leadership positions in Babylon. And these were obviously promotions that they wanted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted from slaves to supervisors in a moment. And they did nothing to earn or deserve the promotions. The promotions came to them completely by grace, completely by the favor of God. The three Hebrew boys were sitting around one day when news came that their friend Daniel had just been promoted to a very high position in Babylon. And then all of a sudden, boom, they got promoted too. That without them doing anything, they received promotions from God by God's favor. My point is that favor can do more in a minute than labor can do in a lifetime. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were slaves. They could have worked for 20 years and not earned what they received in 20 seconds by the favor of God. So don't underestimate what the favor of God can do in your life. I'm a witness. I'm, I'm a recipient of favor. I have been a recipient of favor for many years, and I'm thankful for it. Number two, the favor of God attracts both success and haters. The same favor that attracts preferential treatment from those with power also attracts envy from those who want what you receive. While I'm sure that some of the Babylonians were able to celebrate the promotions of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the text teaches that a company of Chaldeans were not happy to see the Judeans get promoted ahead of them. See, hatred and jealousy caused the Chaldeans to go and tattle on Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego, they went out of their way to report to the king what the three Hebrew boys had done. See, when God promotes you, the enemy will keep an eye on you and attempt to point out anything wrong you do. That's why you need to receive the grace of God to walk upright before him. And another thing is you should accept, um, expect to be talked about. If, you, if you're going to do anything of significance for God and his kingdom, then people are going to talk about you. Matter of fact, if you're not being talked about, then you're probably not doing anything noteworthy for the kingdom of God. Because if you do anything of significance, people are going to talk about you. But don't worry about that. You just keep going and keep honoring God. Number three, never violate your integrity. <laughs> Whatever you compromise to get, you're going to have to compromise to keep. So just don't compromise in the first place. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to compromise. They refused to violate the law of God because this was the God that gave them the promotion in the first place. They were not going to keep the promotion and, and disrespect the God that gave them the promotion. They were not going to bow down before some idol that the, they knew their God didn't want them to buy, bow down before. They refused to bow even if it meant they would burn. And we're going to learn about that more tomorrow. My point is never bow to the pressure of the enemy and never violate your integrity. Number four, and finally, the poison you receive from haters cannot stop the purpose you have received from God. The same God who put you there can keep you there, right? I mean, if God put you there, then he's going to keep you there. That They can't stop you. God had a plan and a purpose for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And no poison, no plot, or no punch from the enemy could stop them because stopping them would mean stopping God. See, when you are fully submitted to God, you cannot be stopped because stopping you would mean stopping God, and God is unstoppable. And finally, keep your confidence in God. See, you are limited, but God is limitless. You are flawed, but God is holy. If you pursue God's best for your life based on your ability with your confidence in you, your pursuit is destined for failure. You're not perfect, and you will most certainly make mistakes along the way. So if your confidence is in you, your mistakes are going to strip you of your confidence. But if your confidence is in God and in his dedication to you and to the plans that he made for you before the world began, then when you make mistakes, you'll be able to keep going. Do you know what that's called? That's called grace. And yes, it is amazing. Because you know that God called you by grace. He uses you by grace. He destined you by grace. And so even when you make mistakes, you receive forgiveness and you keep going. So let's declare this over our lives and declare this in faith. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and my requirement to live by faith. You have started a good work in me. And I am confident that you will continue that work until Jesus returns. You called me from my mother's womb. You pursued me while I was living in sin. You washed me of my sin when I accepted your son Jesus as my Lord and you declared me righteous. You have promoted me by your grace and favor. You have given me favor with those in authority and I experience preferential treatment everywhere I go. The same favor that attracts success also attracts envy. People talk about me behind my back. People I don't even know talk bad about me because of their own insecurities. But I will continue to love them and pray for them. I'm not moved by what they say because I know their poison cannot stop your purpose. I keep pressing on in spite of haters, and I keep my confidence in you. I know I'm not good enough, strong enough, smart enough, or perfect enough to accomplish everything I was born to accomplish. But I also know that I will get it all done by your grace and for your glory. Because it's you living in me, giving me the words and doing the work. So I give myself over to you afresh this morning. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind and operate through my limbs that your very power would be manifested in the earth through me. No one can stop me because stopping me would be stopping you.
and you cannot be stopped. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up, you get the messages and they will be a blessing to you as you head into this day. Just remember that when the grace of God is on you, you cannot be stopped. Their poison can't stop your purpose. God bless you.